and welcome back. We're getting into our first segment of the show this morning. As we had mentioned earlier, it's going to be an extended one. That being said, we have with us on set former Boundaries Commissioner Lindsay Belial. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And we also have Robert Lopez, Bobby Lopez from the Belize Peace Movement. Good, Good morning. morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Belize. Right. Now, Mr. Belial, I guess for the most of us who have been following the entire ICJ campaign, and I say this broadly, you have the no, you have the yes, and you have the informational aspect of it. You came out last week with an editorial right. in the Amandala newspaper, and I believe that a majority of those of us who read that particular article are now aware of a totally different opinion based on what appears to be historical facts. I want for us to be able to start from that. I know you're the former Boundaries Commissioner and you have done extensive work on the ground in respect of the position you've taken. Uh, can you give us a brief summary of how you arrived at this particular juncture? Okay, well, what I wrote, actually, are facts, not opinions. Mm -hmm. was based on a little research I did, right? We have been hearing the yesterday ICJ campaign telling the people that we have the 1859 treaty that gives us title to the 8867 we call Belize, mm -hmm. right? And it is our key card going to the ICJ, okay? After doing my research, I found out there are some flaws, some discrepancies in the 1859 treaty as written, right? And surprisingly, the way that the boundary was described in the treaty does not give Belize the 8867, but rather something less to about 6,700 square miles, mm -hmm. right? And those are based on research and facts, right? And the key, the key to that was that um, the Mexican frontier, as we know it, is at 17 degrees 49 minutes mm -hmm. north latitude, right? The British, to my mind, intended to have the boundary at Blue Creek, Rio Hondo. But if you read the special agreement, there is no mention of Blue Creek or Rio Hondo in this treaty. We find that they mention Sarstoon River. Mm -hmm. They mention Gracias a Dios Falls. Mm -hmm. They mention Garbot Falls. Mm -hmm. They mention Belize River. And when they went due north, they mention Mexican frontier. Mm -hmm. Why did they leave out Blue Creek? They should have qualified due north to Blue Creek at the Mexican frontier. Mm -hmm. So they leave no doubt at it. Right? Mm -hmm. So, by having it at the Mexican frontier, they have a northern limit at 17 degrees 49 minutes north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, it would have been difficult for them to describe our boundary going to Blue Creek because then we would be going beyond the limits of Guatemala and into Mexican territory. Mm -hmm. And that would have probably let the Mexicans or Spain at that time, mm -hmm. you know, disagree with them. So um, if we have a map, the map of the um, 1859 yeah. treaty, what, what it actually described, I think the people would be able to see it clearer, right? Mm -hmm. But well, in the interim, mm -hmm. I also want to say there is a discrepancy in the wording of even in the preamble. Mm -hmm. The preamble mentioned that that the boundary has not yet been ascertained and marked out. That's in the pre preamble. That means that the boundary were not yet determined, established, or demarcated mm -hmm. in plain English, right? Then he went further to say that the treaty was to define the boundary. Again, define means to describe, demarcate, and determine. Mm -hmm. Then now when they went into Article 1 of the treaty, it said that the boundary as they existed previous to and on the first day of January 1850. That's that stark contradiction. In the preamble, you said 
It wasn't determined, wasn't defined, wasn't even calculated. Mm -hmm. And now, as they existed, previous to... You've written that this was done retrospectively, correct? Pardon? You have written that this was done retrospectively, correct? What was done retrospectively? From 1859 to 1850, the 1st of January, 1850. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But there was a reason they put mm -hmm. in 1850, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people in Belize, you hear them in talk shows say, oh, we have a boundary from 1850. We don't have any problem with that. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. We had no boundaries mm -hmm. of Belize in 1850. I, I challenge anybody to show me any agreement or document that would state we had a boundary in 1850, mm -hmm. right? The closest thing we had was... In fact, the, um, the Clayton Bullard Treaty in 1850 mm -hmm. did not even mention Belize, mm -hmm. much less its boundaries, mentioned Central America. And then there was a discrepancy there, and they had a 1856, I think, Dallas Claridon Treaty, that in an appendix and an aside mentioned the boundaries of Belize. But if you read it, it does not, a lot of people say it says from the Rio Hondo to the Sassoon, it says to the Mexican frontier again. Sarstoon to the Mexican frontier. You see? <clears throat> what bearing do you believe this would have on any legal argument being put forward before the ICG? This seems to be all technical in terms of where the boundary ought to lie and what have you. And I'm not sure that all of what is premised in the argument is based on cartography. Well, facts are facts. The court will take what's written and mm -hmm. agreed to rather than what you believe or what you think. Mm -hmm. or what you may want to think, right? But the facts is that the description describes what I have said just now. Mm -hmm. But we still have 8867, but what the yes to the ICJ campaign is leaving out and not telling the Belgian people that we need to cap the 1859 treaty with the 1893 Mexico mm -hmm. Belize Treaty. If you watch this map, right? Mexican frontier, 17 degrees 45, nine minutes north. The treaty said everything to the east and north of Sarstoon belongs to Belize. So you have to bring that line east from 1749. It comes there. It comes just below Mascal, just below San Pedro. So that's the northern limit that was described in the treaty. Mm -hmm. So what that treaty described was from that northern boundary south to Sarstoon, mm -hmm. and that only gave us an area of about 6,700. But in 1893, we had a treaty with Mexico, and that top part from the northern frontier up to Blue Creek and along Blue Creek coming into the bay will cap the 1859 treaty, and we have a 8867. So legally, we could argue we have 8867, and we could show mm -hmm. treaties that were signed. Mm -hmm. But the Belizean people are not being told that. You know, people are told that this gives us title to 8867, and that is not the case. Simple as that. <clears throat> now, I want to go back a bit mm -hmm. um, to understand why this position is being put forward now. The context of the conversation has changed, has changed so much over the past few weeks, and I know you're here with a representative of the Belize Peace Movement. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not you are a member of the Belize Peace Movement who advocate for a no position. Um, and why put this information out now? Well, now is as good as any other time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason is I, I, I just completed this research. Mm -hmm. I'm not paid to do any research thing. Mm -hmm. I just do this on, on my time, right? So I've just completed it. And I think it's valuable for the Belizean people to know what mm -hmm. they are up against going into, you know, Mm -hmm. the referendum on April the 10th. Mm -hmm. So as a Belizean, and I have the knowledge of this, I think it's my duty to bring it out for what it's worth mm -hmm. to the Belizean people, right? Rather than just hide it and then when we go to the courts, mm -hmm. then we have to be scrambling around to figure why this was so and why this was not that. So the premise of <coughs> your concern is Essentially, because the 1859 treaty uses the terminology the Mexican frontier, which for you describes a nebulous area, an uncertain area. It doesn't describe an uncertain area. You it's, feel that that's where it, it, it would cut off the top it of. It describes uh, a coordinate, mm -hmm. 17 degrees 49. You could go there any day with your GPS mm -hmm. and know where that is. It is not nebulous. 
It's there, it's on, you could find it on the ground. The one you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, could it be argued that perhaps talking of the Mexican frontier also recognizes that there is a treaty with Mexico as well, which would define the upper limits of the country? Yes, there is a treaty, the 1893 treaty with Mexico, mm -hmm. that defines the Blue Crip, the Rio Hondo, and that portion from Blue Crip south mm -hmm. to the Guatemala and Mexican frontier at 1749. If our boundary was at Blue Creek Rio Hondo, as described in the treaty, then when we did the treaty with Mexico, we would have stopped at Blue Creek. We would come down to mm -hmm. 1749 because from Blue Creek to 1749 is from Mexico, not from Guatemala. And if the treaty had said that the boundary goes to Blue Creek, then all that strip of land north of 1749 to Blue Creek would have been given to Guatemala at Mexican territory. Guatemala, would, Mexico would not stand for that. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the 1749 was that known before the 1859 treaty. That was known some 70 years before. Mm -hmm. Even the Guatemalan capital, the general accepted that. Mm -hmm. So it's not news, it's not um, nothing In your that time people. as the boundaries commissioner, <coughs> did any of this information ever come by you? And were you able to either share that with the administration mm -hmm. at the time? How is it just coming about now that you're happening or you've done the research to bring about this determination? Well, let me tell you. I am on this demarcation, GPS, and this boundary issue from 1990, mm -hmm. right? I was the first set of people to go to the British to do the coordinates in 1990. And again, I was there in 2001 with the PIAG, the NEMA, National Imagery and Mapping Agency, to do the, the um, <coughs> coordinates again, right? At that time, I was doing pro bono work. I had my job in the ministry. I was working in the ministry, and also after that was managing an IDB project. So I just did this on my own time, on the side, on mm -hmm. nights after my work. So I didn't have time to go and research mm -hmm. and go like, oh, you know, they have some people are paid full time to do these things, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then after I retired in 2008, I just threw away my documents, I put them in the corner, and then when this, a um, special agreement came out and I said, let me pull out now and start to time. have the time now, I'm retired, right? So mm -hmm. I look at these things. But um, I could also mention that in um, 2002, mm -hmm. when we had the facilitation process around Pralrika, mm -hmm. and we did the coordinates f with the PIAG, Pan American Institute of Geography, and, mm -hmm. and we coordinated Aguas Tubras Monument, mm -hmm. right? That jumped out to me. Uh, my training does that, that observe coordinate is not the coordinator described in the treaty. And right away I told Prime Minister, at that time, Said Musa, hey, mm -hmm. this monument is not on the described treaty point, you know. It's in the West, and everybody was surprised. Nobody about told how them then? about that before. Well, let me tell you, the British knew, because they have evidence to show that over the years they were moving their map coordinates, and I have, over the years, and I could show they were moving it to Aguas Tubras from the true not. But they just want to leave that so they say maybe no reason, no answer. <laughs> no problem, but the truth is the truth and the fact is the fact. Mm -hmm. And if you go to court and Guatemala really want what was described in the treaty, Guatemala will say, I want June not at 1749, the material where mm -hmm. the Aguas Tubas monument is, because that monument was done between me and Mexico. Mm -hmm. The British was not involved mm -hmm. in that determination. To simplify quickly <laughs> what you're saying, I, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, the western borderline should be a straight 90 degree line, correct? No, but it is not. But it is not a 90 degree line in in reality. It's a, it's, it's it has a, been moved a little bit yeah. westward, yeah. correct? No, 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 no. Can you can you provide some the, clarity for that? The western border from Gabbard Falls mm -hmm. is described as true north. Mm -hmm. They have true north and grid north. Okay. Grid North is the grid line you see on this map that mm -hmm. allow people to 
True North is a line going to the North Pole. Okay. So as you go to the North Pole, that line converges. Mm -hmm. So it moves away from the grid line. Okay. So to know where you are on that, we call it a meridian, because mm -hmm. all of them go through the North and the South Pole. You have to do computations to see how far off and what degrees and minutes you are off from the grid line. Mm -hmm. A layman reading a map will only see grid lines. You won't see that because you have to have a considerable distance before you start to see any shift. Mm -hmm. So only computations are there. So the north line from Gabbard is true north, right? And then you have to compute where true north intersects with latitude 1749 north. And that would be your true coordinate of that point. Highly technical. <laughs> but what ever? does it? Yeah, I was going to say, what does it mean? What are you saying when you say the Agus Torbius monument is in the wrong location? What does it actually mean? Well, it actually means that um, it's not at the point that is described in the treaty. Mm -hmm. And if Guatemala wants to claim what is in the treaty, then Guatemala could move it the 200 meters east, and we cannot argue with that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that monument was set between Mexico and Guatemala. Mm -hmm. The British had nothing to do with the establishment of that mm -hmm. monument. But I said treaty are treaty, treaty are official documents, and you have to respect, respect it. Mm -hmm. So if they want that little sliver, then we have to accommodate them. But more than likely, Guatemala will not maybe bring that up as an issue. Mm -hmm. Guatemala and Mexico accept that point and respect that point and hey, let's believe intersect with that and we have the try point mm -hmm. and leave it as that, you know. It's just a little sliver. Mm -hmm. We're probably interested in a more bigger things. Let me ask you this, Mr. Belal. <coughs> to the best of your knowledge, has there been any consultation perhaps with the government of the Bay and any other technical expert in this area? And or were you ever consulted for your knowledge of what the true map should be? No, I was never consulted. As I say, I'd worked from 1990 to 2008 with the, as boundary and on, on the boundary team at the mm -hmm. level. I was even the boundary and waters commission for Belize with Mexico. So I have good knowledge of that borderline between Mexico and Belize also. So and after 2008, when I completed my work with the government and the IDB, I retired and um, nobody have consulted me. I guess they had, must have gotten somebody else to replace me as Bungi Commissioner. And mm -hmm. They should have probably advised the government and what they didn't approach me. So that's where it is. Mm -hmm. Now, Lindsay, how do you respond to the fact that you are the first and only person to come forward with this interpretation of the 1859 treaty? Well, I believe that nobody really looked at it seriously before. Mm -hmm. You need to have a certain technical expertise to see these things that jump out at you, right? Mm -hmm. Just like <coughs> that little difference at Aguastubas, nobody came out and see it, right? But as we are trained in that type of work, you see it and you know about it, right? So. Uh, let me tell you the truth. I, 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 I was even believing the British that um, that treaty described from Rwanda to SARS-2, you know. That's the reason I didn't even try to investigate it. But when I had my time and start to research after this treaty, mm -hmm. then I say, hey, something not adding up here correct, right? Mm -hmm. It comes out at you, right? And so you do further investigation, you know, find, hey, there's something wrong there, you know. But we need to know these things because if we go to the ICJ, we don't want to be surprised mm -hmm. if these issues come out and then we're scrambling now for answers mm -hmm. because we're going for any and everything. So we have to prepare for any and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we were only going to the ICJ for the borders as Raul Morales, the excellent say, well, we don't have any borders between Guatemala and Belize. We have to go to the ICJ so then to determine the border. And they are the same one who in 1859 sit down at home in Guatemala and signs here we have a border mm -hmm. and now saying we don't have a border. So what will they say when the ICJ rule against them? If they could deny their own borders that they sign. Mm -hmm. hmm? 
<laughs> I mean, this, uh, we have to ask ourselves those questions. <laughs> and that, that is, I think, the enforcement <laughs> issue is one that we hear quite a bit in yeah. terms of concerns that people have. But just going back to, to your interpretation of what the treaty is saying, especially in the definition and the delimitations of mm -hmm. our borders, mm -hmm. um, you, you've said in your article that you feel that perhaps the research that has been done and the presentations that have been put forward from the referendum unit perhaps never involved a technical person uh, with your similar experience mm -hmm. to view the, uh, the challenges or the issues in the 1859 Treaty as you do. Can you talk about that a bit? Well, as I mentioned, I don't know if the referendum unit has a technical expert mm -hmm. in it, or a surveyor, or a mapper, or a cartographer, or somebody at that level. Mm -hmm. And again, if they do have, maybe they haven't investigated it to a depth that could bring it and everybody just accepting that hey yeah, this is this goes to the to um, blue creek you are under right and that step back and do a technical um, investigation and critique of it no? in fact you pose the challenge <coughs> to say that they yes can yes come i do i do yeah if you if you argue the point if you give this to anybody who is trained in boundary description mm -hmm. they will have problems to come up bit different from what I have said. Mm -hmm. right? The reason I, I'm bringing that up is just to show that you have a certainty in what you have researched and you are willing to argue that or to, to be challenged in any way I am by willing. someone who comes with a different opinion I with your same expertise. I am ready and willing to do now, that. How do you break this information down? If you go to, to the supermarket and somebody says, I read your article, but what are you really saying to the Belizean people? Well, to, to put it simple, mm -hmm. there is no need to confuse them with technical details. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think all we need to tell them that this 1859 treaty that they are telling you that is our key ES card going to the 1859, um, going to the ICJ, does not describe the 8867 we call Belize, and the referral norm unit needs to tell you that. We have to cap this with the 1893 Mexico but, um, Great Britain Treaty, and there is a 8867. Simple, straightforward. You will forgive me though, because <clears throat> from an outsider's perspective, I am not sure, based on everything that I've heard so far, that the government would be hinging everything solely on the 1859 Treaty. My understanding is that it would be argued on several points, including the 1859 Treaty. So while perhaps there may be a cap, as you mm -hmm. said, that needs to be placed there to include the 1893 Treaty with Mexico, I don't know that it's the only argument that we describe to be an ironclad one. Can no, you correct no, me no, if no, I'm wrong? That, this is not the only argument mm -hmm. to, to, to argue at the ICJ. Right? Mm -hmm. Because as I say, we don't know what Guatemala will be claiming. So we have to be prepared for any and everything. Because they will be coming with any and everything. If, if Guatemala was only coming with the boundaries or borders in the 1859 mm -hmm. treaty, then we don't need to go further than this. Let's get Mr. <laughs> Lopez in on this. You've, you've, you've <laughs> heard what is being presented by the former boundaries commissioner. What is your take, Mr. Lopez? Well, actually, we were very pleased when he reached out to us mm -hmm. to share this information. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, you know, I, I believe that you all, this is very important to you. And in any way that I can assist you all, the Belize Peace Movement, and contribute to this, to what you all are doing, um, uh, please, I'm at your disposal. That, you know, th those were his, uh, almost his exact words. And so we welcome this because you will know that we have been saying that this is not an ironclad case for several reasons, several reasons. You know, we have, we've been, we've been guided by some legal advice, mm -hmm. right? You will know that we had sent a letter back in June of last year to the um, Bar Association, the president, asking her to circulate a request that we were making um, to the members and to see if any of them would come forward to assist us in what we felt were some legal uh, issues that we wanted to clarify, mm -hmm. um, and uh, no one was forthcoming. We then proceeded and we gave that a period of 90 days. 
June, July, August, I think it went into September, at which point we then started to make our requests to the Caribbean region. We need some help, we want to, I mean, this thing is, at which point we got in touch with a firm in Trinidad and we began to dialogue. Mm -hmm. And they did give us advice, not free, believe me, I'm telling the Belizean people, from the little funds that we raised, we paid $3,500 for legal advice, mm -hmm. right? And that legal advice was telling us just because the next point would have been a legal opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That legal opinion was a cost of $26,000. Mm -hmm. At which point we said, all right, we only have a, 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 what we pool between us. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put that into going for a legal opinion and hell, we have to raise this money? Or do we want to put it on the campaign on the ground? Mm -hmm. And so our group decided, man, you know, so far what we've gathered, we know that we're in the right, our thinking is right, mm -hmm. right? Um, what was the firm that you um, worked with in Trinidad? Oh, it's, it's a long, um, it doesn't come off the, uh, right off the bat, it doesn't, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably think of, law yes it is, actually they have a constitutional um, lawyer on their, on yeah. their, on their, uh, on their firm, um, and um, the name will come to me shortly. So, <laughs> so what's the legal advice that they offered to you? Well, um, they said, they felt certainly mm -hmm. that we, we were on the right track, mm -hmm. Um, that there were some legal um, shortcomings, you might want to call them, or uh, flaws, perhaps. Um, one of the areas that we're certainly looking at is that, you know, in the referendum act, it says that um, the people of Belize will decide in a referendum mm -hmm. whatever the settlement with the Guatemalan uh, uh, claim will be. Mm -hmm. Well, if we vote yes, we're giving that authority now to a court. Mm -hmm right, to determine those boundaries. But it goes further because you know that that authority also is only vested in the National Assembly with a two-thirds vote to change the Constitution with regards to the boundaries. Mm -hmm. So there were several, several um, things. There is also another one with the procedure taken, right? I'm not an attorney, and honestly, this is still being looked at by a... By a by You're a, talking about the compromise? Yes, okay. yes. But to go, to go back to what he was saying, we kept saying that, and, and you, will, you will recognize and you will remember that the Belize Peace Movement also saw the importance of the Mariscal Spencer Treaty mm -hmm. and how this fit in because we were also reading that same to the Northern Frontier. Mm -hmm. And we were kept going, well, where, you know, this Northern Frontier, where was it and what? Mm -hmm. And so we initiated communication with the Mexicans and in fact, for the first time since 1893, was that anniversary ever commemorated? Mm -hmm. We invited the foreign ministry, we invited everyone. Nobody showed up except the two mayors of Orange Rock and Corozal, so at least we had some officials. But you should have seen the respect and what that was given on the Mexican side. Mm -hmm. Every high-ranking military, uh, representatives from the governor's office, the mayor was there. Mm -hmm. and we had a huge ceremony on the bridge, center right in the middle, mm -hmm. that, that, and they want this to actually become an annual event because they felt it was, very, it was, it was an important treaty. Bearing in mind that it would, did not happen for years after the 1859. So we saw, so when Mr. Bilal reached out to, to us uh, last week and said, you know, I have this information and I think you guys have been on the right track that this is not an ironclad case. And if a court finds a flaw, forget it. We don't know. And like he was saying, if, if Article 2 said it was only to determine the boundaries between the two countries, we could have probably gone with that, but it is, it is any and all legal claims of Guatemala against Belize, they're the claimant, to land at insular territories. Territories is different from boundaries, and he can mm -hmm. speak more to that, but as we have understood it, you know, this is, this is, two, this is two different things, but it goes on, and I, I challenged at a, at a meeting just last night. I want you to tell me why did we put in, we also want the court to determine and to declare the rights therein of both parties. Now, what right would Guatemala have in Belize or Belize in Guatemala? Mm -hmm. The rights to explore for oil, the rights to whatever. But we're asking the court more than one thing. But yet in the question being posed to the people, we're, we, we didn't, we didn't, the, the people don't know anything about rights. Mm -hmm. You know, the majority of people aren't going to read this thing. We have asked, want to read this thing? No. And they got copies, they're going to read it. Well, the question, 
doesn't say anything about the courts determining rights mm -hmm. or declaring rights. It simply says again, <laughs> determining the boundaries of the respective territories mm -hmm. and eras of the parties. So, you know, these are discrepancies that need to be explained to the people. Need, we need to understand you. that, yeah. okay, let's say that we, <coughs> we win the case. We have everything intact. But they say, you know what? Um, there are some rights we want to accord to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. It might be based on the maritime, maritime. areas. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, perhaps you know? that's one supposition we can make. But gentlemen, I want to I want to take a, a, a quick break right here, a pause sure. in the conversation. We do have another segment coming up where we'll continue. So uh, we will be back in a few continuing or conversation about the road to the referendum on whether or not to go to the ICJ. We'll be back in a few. So stay tuned. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces the Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all that and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. We're back, of course, continuing our conversation here on Open Your Eyes. We're with former Boundaries Commissioner Lindsay Belisle and member of the Belize Peace Movement, Robert Lopez. We're talking about the upcoming decision, the historic decision, uh, on whether or not to take the Guatemalan claim to the ICJ. We've spoken a bit about uh, your recent article uh, in the Amandala newspaper talking about the 1859 treaty and the boundaries and what it says and especially what it doesn't say. Um, and so, Bobby, I wanted to just get some insight. You, you were telling us before the break that the Belize Peace Movement has been looking for a legal advice. You've been doing your own investigations as to what are some of the concerns or investigating further the concerns that you've had um, in going to the ICJ. Now, you said very clearly that you are disputing the fact that this is an ironclad case. And in fact, I can say that that is one of the things that many people have spoken about in terms of the message that has gone forward on why we should go to the ICJ. No one ever believes that there's no risk involved. So having found some of the areas, this is one where you can go back to your people, your mass, or people you're just educating. How much do you find that they're interested in understanding the details, in validating the concerns that they're having? Well, um, interesting that you asked that, Marlene. Um, we have, of course, been giving our own presentations because, yes. honestly, the, the referendum unit has basically not included us. Were it not for the UB uh, Senate, uh, Senators Consortium mm -hmm. that initiated that particular tour, um, we would not have had an opportunity to really present side by side with them. Mm -hmm. um, that gave us an, a, a, a venue and an opportunity. But more recently, what we've been doing, and, and both our colleagues in the North uh, and South, uh, Will does it as much as he can, and, and we've been doing it in the West, is that whenever we hear there is a presentation taking place, villagers call us, mm -hmm. uh, chairman call us, people who know us said, listen, we're having a thing, and um, were you all invited? And we said, no, he said, well, come. So this weekend, we actually um, sat in three different uh, presentations. Uh, Friday night was Duck Run. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Saturday was Valley of Peace. And last night, or yesterday evening, was um, Santa Familia. And what we're finding is, is the narrative seemed to have changed a little bit in the last couple of weeks, or a week or so, really. Mm -hmm. Because where they were always saying, we, you know, we're, this is an educational forum uh, exercise and we're here to give you the facts and what have you. 
Of course, in between that presentation, they're saying that the, the court is the only way to go. This is the only way, and yes, they're waiving the 1859. This is what we're going to court on, and this is our ironclad uh, title, uh, what airtight title that we're going on. What we found interesting were several little discrepancies. One in that, you know, we're not going to court really because of this. We're going to court because of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We signed an agreement that, guess what, if we vote yes on April 10th, we're, we will go to court. And I think the most important, and you know, even in the UB uh, uh, tour, we found that the referendum unit and the presenters were actually leaving out the most important thing, which is a question that people will be asked. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing to explain to people. What do you mean the question that people will be asked? Well, what they will be asked on the date on the of the date, referendum. Yes, because people need to clearly understand what it is that they are saying yes to, or what it is that they are saying no. That's what you're yes. talking about. Yes, okay. Marlene, that was not brought up at the three presentations that we witnessed. Mm -hmm. Not once did the, did the presenters say, "Listen, here is the question you will be asked on April 10th. Read it to them." Do you have any questions? Can I clarify anything? So what you, you want know? is them to dissect well, what the question is Well, they are saying. saying that this is an educational campaign, but really it is skewed towards this is we need to go to court. Mm -hmm. We have to go to court. The court is the only way that can settle this. And then showing all the support they have from different persons that are saying this is the way it Essentially, you would be running what we would consider to be a counter campaign. Mm -hmm. You're saying no to the ICG. Yes, certainly. I think what a lot of persons that I have spoken with have said, well, look, if I listen to one side that is saying, yes, they have presented all of these facts and reasons as to why we can go or why we should go. But when I listen to those who simply say no, they are yet to produce any alternative for not going to the ICJ with a view to still be able to resolve the issue. Where do we stand on that from the peace movement's point of view? Listen. Have you seen our presentation given by either Paul Morgan or Patrick Rogers? Have you really seen it? I mean, the PowerPoint and the explanations? I have heard parts you of it. You have heard I'll be parts of it. That. Okay. Yes, sir. We're not neg negating that they're not producing facts, you know. Mm -hmm. We're saying that you're not producing all the facts. Mm -hmm. And so we are finishing, they might, we, we, we don't, can't put a percentage on what the, the facts they're producing, mm -hmm. but we're, we're, we feel that we bring the rest of the facts to the table. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a case in point. In 2016, when UB had a, a student debate, um, Paul Morgan and Dickie Bradley presented the no side against, mm -hmm. and uh, Lisa Schumann and um, I believe it was Ambassador Murphy presented mm -hmm. the, the yes side. Well, there was an entry poll taken by t on, on the students. They came up, the poll said that 39% of them were of the yes. Mm -hmm. 37 were of the no. Mm -hmm. After the debate, after the students hearing both sides, both arguments, because you have to admit there is two sides to this mm -hmm. argument. Mm -hmm. There just can't be one. Mm -hmm. And when they did the exit poll, the yes remained at 39%, and the no went up to 53%. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a fact, and they know that when people are afforded the opportunity to hear both sides, then they can wait and decide, man, am I, no or am I yes? And if I'm yes, th these are what, this is why I'm yes. And if I'm no, this is why I'm no. Mm -hmm. But we are putting forth facts. Now you bring the question to, well, after the, the no, mm -hmm. then what? Mm -hmm. Well, the prime minister has also answered that. Life continues. We're going to get up on the 11th of April, okay? And we're going to pick ourselves up, right? Now remember, now we're not the ones claiming. Mm -hmm. Guatemala isn't going to invade. Come on, in this day and age, Guatemala will not invade. In fact, they've said it themselves. Okay? But this is an opportunity to reset the button, perhaps bring in new negotiators. This is a time to bring in the young, bright persons. In fact, other people like Mr. Belial who are very qualified. I mean, we, I, we firmly believe so you feel the it way forward, if there is a no vote yes. come April 10th, is yes. to start to renegotiate? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is an opportunity to say, listen, 
this agreement needs to come back and look at. Listen, well, we, we know tried that we for know. the past 50 years. If I, if come I, on, if come I on. listen but to the politicians. But negotiation never ends. Mm -hmm. Negotiators but, fail, but not negotiation. Bring in new people, new ideas, new but folks. I want to yeah. just counter with one of the, sure. one of the issues that uh, has been addressed several times with those who are pushing for a yes vote, which negotiation means a bit of a concession. Mm -hmm. It means that at some point, Belize and Guatemala team. have mm -hmm. to agree that there will be some form of concession, which mm -hmm. is why negotiation failed before. What makes you feel confident that if Belizeans vote no on April 10th, that there will be a different outcome if, it's, if it goes back to renegotiation? Marlene, I, I certainly feel that we have, we have watered down our position. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a fact, okay? We need to get back from we a position. Belize we believe. We believe. How so? Well, we only need to go back to 1981 mm -hmm. when we had recognized boundaries, regardless if, Mex if Guatemala did not recognize it. It is there. It is in our constitution. From 1990, from 81 to 91, there was no chate uh, 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 coming, people harvesting chate. There was no gold being extracted. There was no lumber being cut because it the first thing you do when you're given a piece of land, and the, 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 the learned gentleman and all of us know, man, you go and find out where your boundaries are, and the boundaries were there. First of all, you clean it, you start to develop it, mm -hmm. uh, and, and put it to good use, okay? Every BDF we have talked to, retired, uh, older BDFs, have told us that they used to patrol the boundaries with the British. Mm -hmm. So the boundaries were there. But I'm telling you, if you leave a boundary or any line uncleared three to five years, you know, every time I pass, I don't know, you, I'm sure you all have passed, and I don't mean to divert. Mm -hmm. You ever pass, and it's only been three or four years, you ever pass the, the banana farm that has been abandoned by, mm -hmm. you see how quick that has been overtaken? That's how quick nature takes over. And then it's lost, it's gone. So that's now why you feel to, that our position is diluted? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm okay. giving you one example okay. mm -hmm. where, because yesterday they were showing at the presentation, oh, the Chate uh, guys were coming over and now their lumber is coming on and then they're coming, because they don't know where our boundaries are and, where, and, and, mm -hmm. and we have to stop this. Well, that won't stop unless you p clear that boundary, protect it, secure it, develop it, right? Why are we not developing that strip? Even if you had declared it a, a, a natural reserve, say, listen, man, the reserve two miles on the whole border and put it in farms and, and communities and whatnot, so you know exactly where your boundaries are. I'm just saying that's one. We, we failed to have kept the, the boundaries clearly marked, cleaned, and, 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 uh, and patrolled. Mm -hmm. That's one. Okay. Then in 1992, and we only recently found this out because all these years we were wanting, well, how we gone from a border to an adjacency zone? How we gone for, to, 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 to where it's even been called artificial and it does, the, the, the monuments are now reference points. They're not, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. So here again was another watering down of what we knew was our, were our borders. By the 1992 joint declaration signed by the Prime Minister and Guatemala saying that we have not established borders Man, we have established borders. You can't sign something. You can't get the sign something like that. So I think that was another example of us watering down, right? Then we had the maritime areas came in. Mm -hmm. Where now we're offering them, and we, 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 we justify it by saying, you know, we need to give them passage. So we're, we're taking away some of our maritime mm -hmm. rights, sea rights, and giving it to Guatemala in hope that and, and of course, the use and enjoyment of the Ranguan and Sapedili mm -hmm. and what have you, in hopes that this would, this would create a, uh, be, a, be acceptable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> to me, that was another watering down. Then we come to Sarstoon. Man, this has the protocol for Sarstoon? This is it a tells us down down or, or is it a so, 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 so he, all of these are, are instances where we have watered down and watered down. And then, Marlene, we don't know what else. You know that every time you have a meeting in your organization, there are minutes, mm -hmm. right? Minutes are kept certified and, and signed off on. Well, there's volumes of minutes of all these negotiations. We will never know because 
the confidence building measure protocol said that it shall not be given to the public mm -hmm. unless under cir extreme circumstances or whatever. Well, that's the only way we were able to force that 1992 document. That was not public. That did not become public on, until Patrick Rogers challenged us as Schumann, well, show me and show me. And we had to insist until they sent us, as a human emailed us that document, and then it became public that, wow, in 1992, this joint declaration took place, that we don't have any borders between the two countries. So it has, you, you've watered down our position to where now we're offering, for the first time in the history of the ICJ, no country has ever put forth its whole country to the ICJ. In fact, I think even uh, you were at The Hague or something, even somebody said, this is a unique case. This is not just about boundaries. You're giving up, you're asking the court, here is my whole territory. Redefine it and tell me if this is, this is determined if this is our boundaries. Okay. Could I, could I mm -hmm. uh -huh. A no vote is not only a no vote saying that Belizeans don't want to go to the ICJ mm -hmm. with this dispute, right? A no vote is a very powerful vote. It's like a plebiscite. Mm -hmm. Countries do that when mm -hmm. they have important questions like sovereignty and so on. Mm -hmm. A no vote is telling Guatemala and the international community that we don't want to be a part of Guatemala. We don't want any part of Belize to be annexed with Guatemala. We want to be left alone with our sovereignty and territory intact. Mm -hmm. No vote sends a message to international community. Plebiscite votes are accepted, you know, accepting international norm. So by sending a no vote, it will weaken Guatemala's case going forward that, hey, these people don't want to be a part of us, right? So it's not a no and it's finished there. That's a vote that will bring awareness to the international community that Belize wants to be Belize, mm -hmm. right? I don't just add that right so. I, I, I want to I get some clarity on this. Does the Belize Peace Movement want a resolution to this claim? Of course we do. Of course we do. And we, and, and we feel that, that there is, it has not been handled the right way. Honestly, Marlene, we feel that the generation mm -hmm. that should be taking this thing on are the generation, what I call them, the post-independent generation. Mm -hmm. My kids, mm -hmm. born after 1981, because honestly, I, I, I think so we were born- So you're talking about a deep freeze like uh, Senator Courtney? Well, yes, I would, I would want that in, in government right now, there is not one person sitting in government that is from the 1981 forward, not one. I would want, and it's not very far, guys, mm -hmm. in another 20 years, we'll probably have a government fully seated by post-independent, bright, young, people, I mean, really bright, and then they can decide, you would be surprised at the stuff they will come up with. <clears throat> In fact, we have met with some attorneys who are post-independent young mm -hmm. attorneys, man, super bright. You know, look at what's happening in, in technology but, and all of that. Isn't that tantamount to kicking the ball down the road? I asked well, because I, do I, we I, have a right to decide w to gamble our, our kids' inheritance? Do I have a right to, 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 to take the inheritance of my children and gamble it when I've already told them this is what you're going to inherit. But no, the when they side, inherit it, so so they are the true inheritors of this. Would you not want to this? resolve the matter now while you have a chance to do so, as opposed to saying, "Well, look, I'll leave it for you to decide when that day comes." Not under this agreement. Mm -hmm. Not under this agreement. Mm -hmm. We agree with him that certainly, if we were only dealing with the boundary. And, and, and it was certainly better written than this. And we were supposed to, in the next few days, we're supposed to be getting some finality because our, our attorneys met over the weekend for a legal briefing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm hoping they will then be able to bring the ar that argument, right? Mm -hmm. But certainly, we're not, we're not totally against going to the ICJ, but not under this agreement. This agreement is too flawed. You know, and it even gives, uh, you know, we've been here, we've, been, we've met several times with um, with uh, uh, Ms. Sandra Kowe. I mean, she's mm -hmm. a, a hard uh, um, p position with how we're giving credence, whether we vote yes or no, we're acknowledging by default that Guatemala does have legal claim. So right? the issue is with the I draftmanship of the language or is it the position to go? 
I just want to be clear on that. Your issue is with the, the way how the wording is crafted as to why you're objecting? Yes, and also that the Belizean people will not have what is the, 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 the say mm -hmm. in exactly what the settlement will be. Mm -hmm. That's taken away from us. We're now giving that, we're not according that to a court. The court will determine that, not the Belizean people. All we're doing is we're voting yes for a court to decide. Mm -hmm. And we will have to accept that decision because it's legal and binding and, and it's final. There's no appeal and everything like that, right? And then it has to go through our National Assembly and then they have to, they have to, to, to now fix the Constitution if it is that we, are, we, we lose any land or maritime areas. So what I'm hearing from you is that in advocating for a no position, uh, your concerns are your concerns include the wording of the special agreement, the, the legality of it, and the, the constitutionality the of it. Of our current position, yes. Um, and after a no vote, you would want to see negotiations resume. Sure. And if in the long term we are to go back to the court, you are not against settling this at the International Court of Justice? No, we're not. No, we're not. But mm -hmm. certainly not under any terms of losing land. Mm -hmm. Honestly, not. We feel that our territorial integrity is not for litigation or negotiation. That do you portion hear, there. Do you hear, one of the things that we, we hear very clearly, and I know because the issue of determine, the, the use of the word determine, mm -hmm. um, the referendum committee and those who advocate for a yes position have spoken of this point quite a bit. And so their response is that including any and all means that it would be the finality of the issue. In other words, once we have decided any and all claims, mm -hmm. then there is no further claim that Guatemala can have. How do you respond to that? What I would want to do is ask the, our government to please disclose the minutes any minutes that discuss this because we are sure in fact they have acknowledged that it was discussed they have acknowledged that they asked for legal advice from their their from their legal yeah. their attorneys so there are what do you minutes. mean the wording yes the yes yeah there, this was debated so yeah. what we would want uh, is for them to disclose all minutes of whatever meeting uh, they, that was held because those minutes are there Stamp and certify, this is what we discuss. This is what we understand to mean any and all. This is what we understand to mean legal. This is what we understand to mean declaring the rights mm -hmm. of both parties. All of those things are, are, are documented in minutes yeah. that should be disclosed to the people. Perhaps if we had full disclosure, there wouldn't be this doubt. But we know that it is being held because they agreed to not bring it out. Lindsay had a contribution. Yeah, if I may add that. I think the special agreement is badly worded. Mm -hmm. It does not give the confidence to the people mm -hmm. to go and say yes. It's open-ended. Mm -hmm. Any and all, the people will not buy that. I have read a lot of special agreements. And in all of them, it stated exactly what they want the court to decide and rule on. Mm -hmm. Guatemala has been making claims to believe for decades. Why couldn't Guatemala in 2008 list Clearly defined. what they want us to, 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 to go to the ICJ for? Mm -hmm. They take us for fools and say, any and all, just sign this document and after you go and vote yes, then I will tell you what I want. That's an insult to us, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of Belizeans is fearing that we don't know. Me, as a person on principle, mm -hmm. I do not support things I don't know about. Mm -hmm. I don't sign blank checks. I don't sign documents I haven't read. Mm -hmm. and, and that's only that. And there is so many things wrong with that special agreement. They talk about only the legal claims of Guatemala will be heard at the ICJ. Mm -hmm. If you look in that special agreement, which section tells you how they will sift out the many claims that Guatemala will be making so that only the legal claims reach the ICJ. Well, that all means that the it claims will only will be reach looked at right? through international law. All, mm -hmm. the all the claims is going to the ICJ, legal or otherwise, not only legal, because there's no process here. Who determines what it's what's legal yeah. to go to the, the ICJ? Judge will, the judge well, well, the, the so? statutes of international <laughs> law, we, I, I think that that's been explained mm -hmm. um, quite a bit.
But I, I hear what you're saying in terms of, of signing a blank check, but mm -hmm. perhaps if one were to be cynical and say, well, this is your interpretation of the 1859 treaty, and perhaps the education committee, the government has gotten their own uh, expert to look at it just as you have and feel secure, but to bring all that information forward is almost arguing the case before you even go to court. Well, it's good that you know what you're up against before you go to the court and not wait until you go to the court to find out what you're up against mm -hmm. and then you're in problem. So that it's good said, that all of this thing is brought out in the open mm -hmm. and discussed. That being said, with all of what we've learned so far, would you guys be open or in favor of a revised legal opinion? Given all the information that has come forward as a result of your, your research, the, the investigative work you've done in trying to dig into the background, would you guys be... Well, we've been saying all along that mm -hmm. we think it should have been, we should have asked the ICJ for that legal opinion. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways of, the, I mean... You talking about legal opinion or advisory opinion? Not an advisory, advisory position, a legal, legal. legal, revised legal To position. my mind, no, at this time, mm -hmm. a legal opinion would be good. But mm -hmm. I think a rewrite of that special agreement could solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Because we need to know exactly what we are going. If we are going for the boundaries, as the, um, the Guatemalan ex-foreign minister say, then, to my mind, I'd be the first one to say, let's go to the ICJ. Mm -hmm. This will cover that. But they are all over talking mm -hmm. about boundary and talking about territory Territories and maritime. everything. So right? if you get so it's confusing to the Belizean people. Of two 2019 mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it says all that was said before in the previous legal opinions that we do have a very strong case mm -hmm. that the 1859 treaty will hold up in court will that be if suppose it's a post-independence uh, legal opinion as well law, uh, from an attorney would that then make you feel secure in voting to take the claim for, to the ICJ for me I don't need to see another legal opinion. All I need to see that what we are going to the ICJ for, right, in the special agreement. Because we have a strong case. Mm -hmm. You don't have to waste money on another legal agreement. But it will be good to have. But this is the problem. And for you? The special agreement. Well, we're waiting to hear back from <laughs> our attorneys on the legal part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully, we're hoping that this week they'll be able to, <clears throat> to, to, to but we just feel that there's too many unknowns. Mm -hmm. And I've always, you remembered my mom's advice, you know, when in doubt, follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Not follow your brains, follow your heart. And my heart is saying, you know what? Belize is all we got. Mm -hmm. If there is a chance of us losing something, and there is, I will err on the side of, of, of safety. Mm -hmm. you know? And sure. so at this point, I cannot, I cannot vote yes with all the doubts and with all the unknowns and with all the risks that, that are clearly not even being told to us. So um, that is our position. Um, truthfully, we, it's, you know, the Belize movement has said that it really it's not for litigation or, or negotiation, our sovereignty, mm -hmm. our territorial integrity. That part we're, 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 we're holding on to. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you for coming in and sharing your positions with us this morning. Thank you. It's Thank a you pleasure. For Thank you for We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the 50th anniversary of Belize Audubon Society. So stay tuned.